we've gotten a whole bunch of um, um, tweets in our direction. Greatly appreciated. I've gotten some uh, some texts and some emails. Some people were saying this to me um, over the past weekend when I was strolling around the Super Bowl state about what a great job we all did last week. And I say that to all you here and everybody part of the Rich Eisen show last week. And uh, in terms of the personal kudos I've gotten, I'm, I'm touched by it all, especially knowing that no one out there in terms of my work, and I don't think you guys know either in terms of my work, um, the script for Super Bowl 57, oh. that part about the defensive holding penalty, that was mine. Um, oh, yeah, wow. yeah, yeah, yeah. And you should have seen it in the table read. Jeez. The table read was wild. You know, somebody had to tell James Bradbury right. it was, was going to be him. Yeah. He didn't take it very well, no. but he kind of kept it to himself. Um, and, um, and, and then, of course, when he did get called for holding in that part mm -hmm. of the game, it, it totally threw everyone on my Twitter feed that was barking at me about how everything was being uh, uh, set up and fixed for the Eagles. It totally undercut them at that point in time. Like all good movies, Rich, you need a twist. Yeah. You, you need a plot twist, especially late in the third act. And, uh, yeah, we, we and it's just like all yeah. those Chiefs fans that didn't see that call on Juju Smith-Schuster early on, it's a fix. It was fixed. It's all fixed. Nice. And then all of a sudden, that was my old Henry-like twist. Just flip it. Well done. Thank you. And, and like I said, you know um, – it, it, it was it was an incredible season, just scripting it all the way to the finish. Yeah. Shout out to the writers. So you know, again, I I told everybody that I wouldn't say anything, but it was really my idea nice. to just come up with this one last penalty, just piss yeah. off. I yeah. did I did that for you know all the New Yorkers out there who were upset about the Empire State Building yeah. getting lit up. Hey back. I'm like, wait till you see what I got cooked up. Yeah. And I, it was a tough sell in the room, you know to Bradbury in particular, and then, of course, the officials. They don't want to be front and center. Well, Nick Sirianni but, was probably crying, right? Well, uh, no, he flipped me the bird. Oh. That would bird <laughs> when he flipped because he knew what was coming. Yeah. Oh, gosh, so we're going to be up by, you know, 10, huh? <laughs> 10, huh? And we're just going to join the Super Bowl 51 Falcons as the only teams in Super Bowl history to be up by 10 or more halftime and not win the game, huh? It was a tough sell. Because, you know, all the Eagles fans thought so. Uh, my apologies to uh, everybody out there about my script idea. How dumb is this? Hashtag stupid? NFL. Rate. All the stuff. I got that all throughout the entire Super Bowl. It's fixed. It's fixed. It's fixed. And and then, of course, when the officials pop in there, it's it's the officials who are fixing the game. And it's just human condition, folks. I still... To this moment, cannot believe that flag came out. You know, at, at first, when I saw it in the stadium, and I'm like, yeah, that's a hold. He tugged his jersey. He did tug his jersey. And, and then, you know, as things went along, I'm like, that is something that should not be called. And I heard Pereira, Mike Pereira, lead Fox rules analyst, say yesterday, doesn't matter. First quarter, last quarter, first week, last two minutes. You see it, you call it. And, and yeah, you see it and you call it, but it wasn't called much of the game. Where does that come from? And I think it ultimately just comes down to the disappointment that we didn't see the ending that I, the, the game deserved. And I appreciate James Bradbury saying, yeah, that was a hold. I, I thought they'd let it slide. And I appreciate Hertz and Nick Sirianni after the game saying we should have played better because that is the truth. I mean, the fact that it did come down to a holding call against the Eagles after they were up by 10, okay, they were up by 10, and after they were dominating the first half of that game, which they did, they could have easily been up 28 to 10 going in half. They could have been up 18 and a half. They also got the benefit of Kansas City, the butt kicker hitting one right off yep. the upright. Stoink. Thus, when Kadarius Tony waltzed in untouched into the end zone to give the Chiefs their first lead of Super Bowl 57 in the fourth quarter, their first lead would have been in the first quarter. Mm -hmm. 
They'd have been up 10-7, the Chiefs. So the Eagles did get some benefits in this game. But they also literally fumbled one away. Jalen Hurts' truly only mistake of the night was a major mistake. Led to, by the way, the Chiefs being all over that running play that they called for Hurts. And they had to make him bounce it outside, and he then put the ball on the ground. But the Eagles did allow Kadarius Toney and Sky Moore to enter the end zone untouched to cash in red zone opportunities instead of forcing a field goal like the Chiefs did to the Eagles. That third down drive in the game, looking back, that third, pardon me, third quarter drive in the game after the Chiefs responded to open the second half with a touchdown, a seven-minute 17 play drive in which they picked up two third and longs and a fourth down to move down the field into the red zone only to stall there. That was a wild drive where Dallas Goddard's third and 13 catch was ruled a catch. Then there was a substitution that the Eagles made that forced the refs to stop the game to allow the Chiefs to substitute. And in that interim, Andy Reid challenged the Goddard catch, and it was upheld, by the way, part of the script. But they didn't cash in that third down opportunity and then went three and out themselves after the Chiefs took the lead. Kadarius Tony then responds with a long punt return on a low kick. He also, if you look at this, the screen grab, He's surrounded by four Eagles. How he got out of that is unbelievable. They had him on the left side. They did. And then he bounced to the right. And and then there was just a wall of red. He bounced to the white, uh, to the right. And he took it inside the five. And that got cashed in with Sky Moore being wide open. All I'm saying is the Eagles left so many opportunities on the field. If they didn't stall at the end of that long third quarter drive, that by the way, they also had to call timeout themselves. Could have used that timeout later on, huh? As Jarek McKinnon slid down to force them to use their last timeout, he might have scored. Or they could have taken more knees and had a little bit more time on the clock, the Eagles, instead of eight seconds. So many mistakes that they made that did lead to this holding penalty, meaning so much. I still, however, cannot believe they called it. I wish they hadn't. I don't think anybody in Kansas, if if, just take a look again at the replay, which is being replayed every two seconds now instead of many of the the moments of Super Bowl 57, the replay of the hold, you take a look at at the ball when it landed. Juju Smith-Schuster didn't run up to the official and start yelling at the official, like, why didn't you call it? It looked like he was just going to return to the sideline and be done with it, it knowing that their offensive kind of set was over. Yeah. Mahomes pointed, I think, after the flag came out. Uh, I don't think he pointed, then that drew the flag. The flag was in the air. Okay. And as the flag comes, I think he pointed like that was on him to make sure it wasn't somehow called on his own guy. Right. If I had to guess, we'll ask Mahomes that when we do get him back on the program. I think you're right, Rich. It's just we just feel kind of cheated that we didn't get to see uh, Hurts. Yeah, Hurts out there because he had, was having such a great game. Arguably, could have been MVP, and to just it was just kind of a womp womp ending. It was just you know kind of Price is Right also, game show loser ending. And yeah, we just felt kind of robbed because the game was so awesome. It had a chance to be one of the most iconic Super Bowls of all time. There were 73 points scored. And then we also know as we're watching. I feel this way at the end of a fourth quarter of every Super Bowl. Yeah. Seven months. Season's over. Right. Yeah. And so why wouldn't we, we want to see football. more? Yeah. more football. Yeah. Bonus football. And it wouldn't have been like the previous overtime in the previous game in a Super Bowl where one team came back on the other so far down the previous Super Bowl in which somebody had a 10-point lead at halftime and blew it for the lack of a better phrase. I mean, that game, the Patriots had taken over and was so dominant and had been on the field so much 
Falcons were gassed. So when the the Patriots got the ball first, that was a wrap. This time around, both teams, I think, were ready to roll for a fifth quarter. And on top of it, we have the new overtime rules that even if the winner of the toss went down the field and scored, the other team would get a chance to come back, which is why I made my bold prediction in the pregame show on NFL Game Day morning of double overtime. We could have even seen My the strategy gosh. that we talked about before when this new rule came into effect. Give that, the other guys the ball first. Yeah, win the toss. You know what? We'll play defense first. Stop it Let's so we know. So do. then we, we'll stop you from scoring a right. touchdown. Knowing that now it's the old overtime no. rules. Touchdown wins. Field goal just keeps it going. Right. Would have been cool. Oh, my God. I know. So close. But I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I should have. I should have spoken up in the in the script meeting yeah. instead of giving this idea. I should have pulled it back. I should have kept my finger on the chess piece. Your so script to speak. idea should have just been overtime. Yeah. And next time. Yeah. Next year. Yeah. <laughs> I still got a few more years left on my NFL Network contract, and thus a seat in that in that room. <laughs> and uh, TJ, I'll 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 talk about you know maybe making Dallas part of this a little bit more next year. You know. You know it's funny Brockman mm-hmm. and I got um we got interviewed by a guy that was standing outside of, you know, where we were walking in to uh, go to the set. And he said, do you believe the NFL is scripted? And I said, absolutely. And he said, why do you believe that? I said, well, look at this. I said, you see all the, the <laughs> accolades and all the success that the Cowboys had early on? And I said, I truly believe the rest of the league got together and said, we cannot allow this to continue. So they've been scripting us to lose every In all year. seriousness. Though. <laughs> in all seriousness. In all seriousness. That's funny. You were interviewed by somebody walking into the Super Bowl experience during our week in Arizona last week. Yeah. Somebody used that time with you. Mm-hmm. Was this the, the time we were waiting to, for you to guys to rehearse and you were not there? Was yes. that Tuesday? It was no, the no, this was, this was when we arrived? Wednesday. Okay. Oh. So, at any rate, on a Wednesday of Super Bowl week. That wasn't the only question he asked. I, I, doesn't it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Any <laughs> real estate with a microphone, with somebody holding it, to somebody else, mm-hmm. the question to you was, do you think the NFL is scripted? He was joking. Okay. Are it we was, sure about this? Yeah. Okay, good. <laughs> good God. Yes, it was okay. a joke. Because <laughs> as you know, there, there are some people who think otherwise. No, like, he was out okay. asking He was asking humorous questions. I want to hear from Me and Chris from the show, he's asking us humorous questions and okay, legitimate good. questions, and that was one of them. Okay. Are we, and you could tell the difference between humorous and legitimate, and that was it. I've been a comedy producer yeah. consultant <laughs> for many years You're throughout not, my Hollywood like, career. You so people. yeah, You have punked people. I, I have punked people. So, yeah, I kind of have a good idea. Okay. You know? I can't believe it. I know. Just just feels a little we – got, we got robbed a little bit. Even though the game was <laughs> tremendous. Tremendous. Stupendous. minutes. I know. And I feel bad that I'm even two days later bleeding with this, but it is truly what a lot of people are still yeah. talking about. Catch the Rich Eisen Show every single day on the Roku channel, 12 to 3 Eastern for free.